I'm not going to dive too much in there. The only thing we're going to need here are two things. One, we're going to need this JavaScript that comes in here. And two, we're going to need the CSS in here because it's got my overcast theme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to my project. And I'm going to add my script files here. Uh, well, only one because I have the 132 already. I'm only going to add 172, the jQuery UI, into my scripts folder. And I'll do it right now. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I love the overcast theme. So in my CSS inside here, I'm going to drag and drop these things as well into the scripts folder. Now, I could probably, and I probably should, drop these in the content folder. Uh, however, I like to kind of keep all my scripting stuff together, even the look and feel. All right, well, the thing I'm going to show you how to do is how mercilessly simple it is to create something like a calendar. So what I need to do, of course, is first and foremost reference the jQuery UI uh, library. So I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay, I have my scripts laid out here. I got my CSS referenced. And now what I need to do is I need to have a control that is going to handle the data input. And what better control than a regular old text input? It doesn't need to be anything special. And so in here I just tell it, well, I'm going to type it out to text and I'm going to give it an ID and I call it O date input and I'll give it a name with the same date input and there we are okay well the way the jQuery works again is when when you want something to have an ability like in this case we want this to be a date input and I should have surrounded those by quotes well anyway um, you just use it as sort of a method you select the element and then you you uh, then you add what you need to do to it uh, in this case what I need to do is I first need to select it so I use my selector syntax and the ID of my input is date input so I just say pound which is the date or the ID selector and date input and then the function I need to call is date picker and there it is now if you were to open up the uh, bits in here and take a look at index.html, that's exactly what you'd see for the date. So this is all we need to do. We've enabled this text input to be a date picker, which is groovy. So when I hit run, and it pops up, we now have, whoops, you know what I need to do is I need to turn that map loader off. For some reason, I don't like living side by side. Hit run, and now there's my date picker. As easy as that split out the uh, functionality a bit here to be a little cleaner and now what I have is a nice new function called load point and I pass it the latitude longitude title and description and what this is going to do is create a point to pass off to the push pin saying this is where you're supposed to go you can see I'm passing it here and I'm setting the title and description for the pin and finally adding the shape so to test this out we could load a point straight in here after we load the map up and these are the coordinates as you probably can guess to my house so if I right click, or excuse me, hit F5, and up pops the map, and hey, wait a minute. Well, for those of you who don't know, I live out in the middle of the ocean. So maybe we can cruise in here a little closer, and you can see where my house is. There's my small island and my small town, and that's where I live. All right, well, that's good, and if I hover over this, here up, there it is, great. Well, now we're ready to go. We can add some data to the page. So there's a couple different ways we can do this, and I'm going to show you both. By far and away, the best way to put the data onto the map is to use a nice uh, Ajax callback using jQuery, and then let the script load the points. Now, I could use uh, server-side tags, as discussed previously, but that would just litter my pretty jQuery code on the client here with some ugly gator tags. Uh, developers in the future are going to look at this and say, oh my goodness, what was this guy thinking? Uh, secondarily, uh, should you ever decide to clean up the JavaScript, which I'm about to, and add some namespacing and so on, put it in a nice centralized file, well, uh, server-side code does not run in centralized files. So and instead, what I think I'm going to do is, again, let jQuery handle the callbacks. And that's easy enough to do. What I can do is use the built-in Ajax functionality inside jQuery. And I can just do something like this, dot Ajax. And I can put in the URL. And off we go. Actually, that should be a slash there. And then I could add some other options in there, callback functionality. I could specify content type and so on. If I wanted to be super lightweight, I can just do get, and that'll send a get request off to the server. Uh, I could also use post. But, I, you know, this isn't a post back. But should I ever need to post data to the server? Well, that's how you do it. Use post. And finally, uh, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use the shortcut uh, get JSON uh, method from jQuery, which is literally get JSON. 
And what I need to do here is I just need to pass in slash dinner. And next up, I'm going to send in a callback function. And it's going to accept some JSON data. There we go. So the way this works is it just makes a request to, get, uh, to the dinner URL. When it gets the data back, it passes it off to this function. This is the callback function. We're going to do something fun in there. So I'll save this down. Well, notice that this URL is just headed off to dinner index. Dinner index uh, right now is set up, as you can see here, set up to just go pull all the dinners and return them to the view. Well, I need to change this. Uh, I need to actually change this based on the format of the request. In other words, is it HTML that's needed? Is it XML, JSON, whatever? And right now, all I need to care about is whether it's uh, JSON or not, and, or an AJAX request or not. And the neat thing is that Phil and team have already thought of this. And so what you can do is you can sniff the headers and look for certain content types, because uh, jQuery always sends back x-requested with, and it says JSON, uh, or jQuery, excuse me. Or you can simply say if request dot is Ajax request and that is a built-in method that Phil and team put in there to smell if jQuery or Microsoft Ajax are calling. So what I can do here is I can just say hey, is this an Ajax request? If it is, load the data and then pass it back as JSON and I'll address that in a second. If it's not, just return the view. And this is exactly what we want. Now we're not running the query first, we'll just run the view and in here we don't even need to do any of this. Great. So now what I need to do is I need to parse this stuff down to JSON. And that is not as hard as it seems. And all I have to do is say return JSON dinners. None. Our Ajax magic is almost ready to go. But we have one last hurdle we have to get by. And you can see what I mean if we set a little breakpoint here, old school style breakpoint, where we output the results to a message box. And back here in the controller, what I want to do also is set a breakpoint because I want to look at what happens. I want to make sure that this callback is happening. And then I want to see if it's going to pop up a message box with what's returned. And if I'm right, then it shouldn't return anything. So we wait for the page to load. And there is our first trip. And this is the get request. This is the uh, non-Ajax request from the page. And if we keep on going here, we get a callback from the page. Yep, and it trips again. This is our Ajax request. And it's going to hit the database there. And it pulls out 12 dinners. And I'm sending it down to the JSON serializer. What I should see next is a message box saying object, object, object. So if I run this, the page will load. Where is IE? There we are. The page will load and nothing happens. And so that's not what we want to see. So what exactly is happening here? Well, let's take a look. If I come in here and I create a new dinner object and I take a look at it, see what the JSON serializer is trying to serialize, I go down and it's a bunch of strings and so on. So that's all good. Dates and latitude, longitude, but if I keep on going, bam, I get a list of RSVPs. Now normally that's okay. Uh, child collections are just fine. Uh, what a JSON serializer will do is it'll go and try and serialize those as well. So, so far that's okay, but if I take an RSVP and I create a new one and I take a look at its properties, well, the second one kind of tips me off as to the problem. Now, these are linked to SQL generated classes, and they've, you know, linked to SQL is awesome. It does us a bunch of good favors, but unfortunately, sometimes it creates these circular relationships because the serializer is going to try and serialize the dinner property on the RSVP, 